is Ozone 11 going to change the way you master records? While I've been beta testing Ozone 11 for the past six months, it's actually been in all my sessions. And what I did was I decided to shortlist the best feature updates that have literally changed the way I'm mastering records. First, this awesome new feature. Remember when Isotope brought Music Rebalance to the RX suite, where you could import your stereo file and then cut your stems apart for the stereo mix? And then in Ozone 10, Master Rebalance was introduced, where you could re-level the vocal or the bass or the drums in a standalone module within Ozone. But now in Ozone 11, you can select on this tab menu where you can go further to reprocess the selected stem within the stereo mix without having to pull anything apart. Like widening the vocals, using a stabilizer to catch the sibilance, imager to make the vocal stereo with a little bit more, and then adding exciter to the side signal. Take a listen to this before enough. Now I do in my Cause I don't know about you But you dance if you don't And you dance if you do It's a catch 22 Cause you can't see the sun If you don't see the moon I flew I grew Expand my views Some old, some new so like here, where I've chosen to thicken up the bass by just doing a low shelf and then adding some harmonic excitement to all of that low end. That was probably an overkill. Yes, this does blur the lines between putting on the mixing engineer hat and the mastering engineer hat. However, the reality of the fast paced music industry is that despite the best alternative is to request remixes, sometimes the deadlines don't permit and you have to make do with what you have. And that's why a feature like this has saved my ass on some pretty tight projects. Now, this is probably going to be one of the biggest hits when it comes to the new update, a new processing mode called Transient Sustain because sometimes you get sent a mix with either too much punch or not enough punch in the right places, this feature opens up a road of new possibilities. Now, Transient Sustain Mode is featured on all the non-dynamic modules within Ozone 11. And if you want to go absolutely wild, you can pair Stem Focus Mode and then apply your processing onto the Transient or Sustain information exclusively. And here's how I did this on a master for Dugong Jr.'s Coupe de Gras release on Majestic Casual. But the kick is just a little bit pudgy, and I'm going to show you why. Over up over in RX, we can see the initial transient of that kick is between 80 to 180 hertz. And that's where that short amount is. But then there's this huge little belly to the kick from about 80 hertz down to 35 hertz, which is sort of just wallowing a little bit. So you don't get that initial punch. You've got this sort of hit and then this in the subs, which was sort of going against the grain. So what I've done is I've chosen to process the drums only, which is the stem focus mode, use the equalizer in sustain mode to attenuate around some of that mud around the 50 hertz and i've exaggerated it here a little bit so you can hear it clearly what's happening and then i've used low end focus mode in transient mode so i'm only focusing on the transient information between that 90 to 200 hertz range where the punch of the kick is now take a listen to what happens when i turn this on she was me to know with a nigga on hinge poured on the map for now after one drink now she in the city with a little bit of liquor and a flask and nowhere to go but she ain't headed home send a match text out to the squad but she ain't here squat back from one of her contacts and she was like fuck it, i don't need no friends she decided to follow the low end she hit up, then I so another interestingly cool module that Isotope has dropped is Clarity. And how this works is via spectral processing 256 individual bands from 300 hertz to 20 kilohertz to flatten the response curve as close to pink noise. Then you have the option to tilt the curve and modify the speed at which it does so. So from now on, whenever I feel like opening up the dynamics in the stereo field like I did here, I wanted a brighter, more open air to it. I reach to the clarity module because what I can do is I can spectrally shape that side single by going into mid side mode and then tilt it so it's slightly brighter and then all those bands are working towards smoothing out that top end opening it up. What I want you to listen for is namely the claps the way they open up in the stereo field with this module. She was made to with a nigga on hinge, bought on the map for now after one drink. Now she in the city with a little bit of liquor and a flask and nowhere to go but she ain't headed home send a match text out to the squad but she ain't here squat back from one of her contacts and she was like I don't need no friends. She decided to follow the law. Another banging new feature is found in the maximizer module called upward compression. Now, when you turn this on, you can boost the low level parts of the signal up in a linear fashion before returning to a unity transfer. 
So what you can do now is boost the softest passages of a mix, let's say in a bridge or a breakdown section, without needing to compress the loud ones or automate a ride gain into the session. Now I used to do this with complicated routing for parallel processing or using other plugins, but this is a very linear way to just simply ride out some of the automation it actually shows it in the meter how it's affecting and how much signal it's bringing back in so take a listen to this now another huge favorite of mine and it's delta mode for every single module yes there was delta mode in ozone 10 but it was only for select modules but now every module has delta mode, so you can hear exactly how each module is influencing the sound of your master. And something that it's been insanely helpful with is dialing in the maximizer module, monitoring and listening to the exact amount of distortion the different character or different speeds of algorithms introduce. So this way you can hear the exact artifacts for how the limiting is imposing on mastering. And I'll just show you this because um, if you watched my video on the IRC algorithm and the patent that they've created, the faster the character, it has a higher distortion score, which it internally calculates. So it ends up being louder, but at the sacrifice of more distortion, the slower, um, there's less distortion. So have a listen to how this, this actual delta mode works as I move the character around. And I also use the delta mode in stabilizer because this is sort of my go-to de-esser at the moment for when I'm mastering, because what I do is I just have it in cut mode on the highs, and then I can listen to how much sibilance it's taking away. Take a listen to this. So you can hear the sibilance that it's removing, so that way you can dial in just the right amount so you're not taking away too much or not enough. Now, this next secret is actually crazy simple to do and it's been available on previous versions of ozone but nobody's really talked about it in the settings menu so if you click on the settings and go to equalizer there's an option to engage in soft saturation or soft clipping when the eq boosts above the fixed point ceiling now that sounds reasonable right but post limiting soft clip the transient information for extra punchiness and this is a really sneaky way to get things snapping you know and and just just take a listen as I dial this in. This is fucked. This is seriously just out there. So I've got that engaged there. Let's chuck on another EQ after the maximizer because we're already at the ceiling, remember? We're already at the ceiling. Okay, we're at the ceiling. Let's go to this EQ. I'm going to go transient mode so we're only catching those peaks and clipping them. Take a listen to this. The liquor in a flask and nowhere to go, but she ain't headed home. Send a mass text out to the squad, but she ain't here squat back. So you can hear that soft clipping just on the transients where the snare and the kick is. Now let's turn it on, off, and then put it back on again and have a listen to this. Now, I love this little trick. I wish I'd known it in Ozone 10 because it's really helped me, especially for EDM music, get a bit more snap just after the limit to really crunch shit up. But be careful. I've used this before and needed to automate the EQ back down during like long or soft sustain passages where, where there's no transient information, that clipping just becomes really audible in not a nice way. Moving on, the EQ and dynamic EQ has also had a redesign visually displaying from one hertz to 22 kilohertz, whereas in the past here's Ozone 10 before, it only displayed from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. This just helps you monitor the lowest of subs to see if there's any things like DC offset you need to manage, or noise that's happening above 20 kilohertz. Just, it's just a visual thing. And actually, all spectral and tone modules got an update in this GUI whereby we now have a horizontal axis to monitor the amount of gain plus minus a processor might be performing. Now, for EQ, that might not be a big deal because it's fixed point uh, dynamics. However, things like the impact module, which is 
variable, the stabilizer, which is variable, the dynamic EQ, which is variable. It's nice to have horizontal axes there. Now, Master Assistant got a few updates. And the first one, obviously, is the layout between 10 and 11. But behind the hood, it's doing something I really like as well as something I'm not a fan of. The first one you might notice is this vocal balance level. So if it listens to the signal and that vocal level is plus minus 0.3 dB from a target ratio for the genre, master assistants will set up master rebalance to adjust the vocal level accordingly. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of this in a mastering context because engineers, producers, and artists are very, very particular about how they set vocal levels and master assistant just taking the reins whenever it's within plus minus 0.3 db to do its own thing i'm not cool with that so i wish you could just by default in the settings turn that off um that would be really good but what they did do in the update which i think is welcome are master assistant loudness targets because in ozone 10 the loudness targets for each of these different styles were programmed to meet the same loudness now what they've done in Ozone 11 is they've pulled together a new pool of data to feed the assistant algorithm and each genre has a different loudness expectation and target which I'll leave up on the screen here so you can see and the reason why I like this is because you don't want to be mastering a folk tune to the same loudness of an EDM track and vice versa it's just it's just a good addition to the overall master system to have loudness targets integrated with them now that's my rundown of all the features i've been using in ozone 11 that have genuinely changed the way i master records now i had planned to interview bill Podolak like i did last year the product manager for this release but due to some last minute scheduling conflicts on my behalf i had to bow out of our initially scheduled interview however i plan to have bill back on and interview him about ozone 11 and if there's any questions you'd like to ask leave them in the comments because I covered everything I'm using, everything I'm doing with Ozone 11, but I'm sure there are things that you want answers to. And leave a comment down below. What are some questions you have about Ozone 11? And I'll be happy to answer anything you have to ask. Leave a comment down below, like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, take care.